Key points. Ending battle. I think my movement was amazing, even with a 4 versus 5. Somebody, let me start off that I think this was a great game for me, but watch this story. We started off by saying he would be throwing the whole game because our Genji is horrible. I don't see the timestamps other than the ending battle. What do you think, Chad? Do you think that we should review this? It's only one key point. If they want to give one key point, I'm okay with it. And timestamp, I mean, it's the ending battle. This is a bit weird. This is going to be the first open queue game that I watch. Okay, so they're staying with Zagia. At the beginning. We're still watching this. Is this a flex? It seems like it. it yeah, it is a flex. Genji dies. They have the Valk. They go for the guys. Okay. Okay, good moves. All getting interesting. It is interesting. Okay. Grip die. Good dodge deck. Goes for the guys. Somehow in five people. Okay, and this is the last fight. Okay. Now, you see. The video was submitted. People are saying that this is an ego vod, but I have a lot of things to comment on this. That will help you climb a lot. Okay, so let's watch this shotgun kitty. First things first. Your Xaga is gonna walk. So wait, are you the solo support in this? Yes, you are the solo support in this. So if you're the solo support in this, Try and walk at the beginning of the fights with the one that walks in first because they will be taking damage. So in this case, if your team is there already, then you shouldn't stay with the Zaga and spawn. Because let's watch what happened. Don't wait and spawn. Just walk. Walk, 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 walk. You see where all the enemies are. You can just fly to the Torbjorn and damage boost them. Okay? Or just fly to the Hanzo and damage boost them. Because you have your teammates regrouping. With the Sonic Arrow, you saw all five of the enemies. So do not wait. This is the key of winning more games in Overwatch. Try to have as the lowest amount of downtime doing fights as possible. Now when you're back, you can be effective. It's okay that you heal there. Sometimes I with healing to then damage boost him. But right now, for example, you could have went with a Torbjorn here and damage boost him a little bit. Or... If you don't want to go to your teammates because they're playing from really far away and you see all five of them on payload and nobody from the enemies can kill you long range, you can just pull out the pistol and even shoot them from here. How do you know if the enemies can kill you or not? I'm going to make it very simple as this is bronze slash silver. If the enemies have Widowmaker or Hanzo and they're playing from this distance, then do not fight them. If they don't have Widowmaker or Hanzo, then I would say you can pull out the pistol and shoot them a little bit. Hello. So right now Zaya's working from spawn, even if Torbjorn was doing his own stuff, then you could have also like stayed with Hanzo, damage plus the Hanzo, damage plus the Genji. He goes in, he takes that position, like the movement so far, like the movement, and now I decide who to damage boost. Now, in a solo support team composition, I would say that it is better to win the fights fast than to win the fights in a slow fashion. Why? Because the longer the fight will go, the more heals the enemy team will have. So your team, if you're the only support in your team, you have to play fast. You have the Valkyrie available. Everybody is in a good position. I would pop the Valk really soon. Even before this, before he dies. Okay, so Genji goes here. I would use my Valkyrie here as a way to engage. I feel like a lot of the time, people tend to use the Valkyrie towards... When something happens instead of, or as a tempo Valk, instead of using it as a tool to engage. So I would recommend that you start this fight in the future. If you're in this scenario again, in which you play Mercy, you're the solo support. They have a lot of heals. Start with damage boost and try to win the fight fast. Now, why that's the case? Because 
let's say you you do one heal while Moisey does one heal, but Moega does one heal. So that's two to one. You know what I mean? The longer the fight, the more value two to one will have. Plus, you're probably going to die, and that's a big issue. Secondly, secondly, you might catch people off guard. If, let's say, right now you'd use Valkyrie and damage boost the Genji. After Moega uses Fade, apart from the fact that you can heal, you can damage, he could have probably killed the Moira in the back and stuff. Even if he doesn't do it, you're still there protecting. He dies. Now you pop the Valkyrie. I'm not gonna judge this Valkyrie guy now, but this is a reactive Valk, okay? This shouldn't work. Going to five enemies, they should try and turn around and kill you. It is ballsy. You could take a bit of cover here. You're moving. I like that you went for it. Your decision making was crisp. It was fast. You decided to go for it. And this is something that I feel a lot of bronze slash silver players hesitate to do so. So props to you for reacting really fast. He dies. I have Valk. I go. I do it. This is why the enemies didn't have time to react and punish you. This was good. But now let's talk about the damage boosting issue. Yes, you have to heal, but you also have to win the team fight. Yes, you take attention from them. You heal, you take attention. You're plus one right now, by the way. You are plus one. Still healing. Still healing, still moving. Okay. This is, you will eventually lose this, okay? This is why this is so frustrating. And this is what I feel like is the experience uh, of uh, the average Overwatch player. You feel like you do as much as you can, and then you die, okay? And your team dies as well. The reason why is because there are some windows of opportunity in which you have to do something or you will eventually lose. Your team was four versus five. Five versus four, I mean. They had two tanks, two supports. I told you at the beginning that the longer the fight goes, the better it is for their advantage. Now, as a mercy player in this scenario, if, I, I know you're afraid that if you stop healing, your team will die. I know that you're afraid that if you use your Valky, if you pop your pistol to go and get kills, your team will die. I know what you're thinking, but at the same time, you cannot be passive. You have to risk trading kills. Your dodges so far are really good, right? This is really good. You know Moira shooting you, you're dodging really nice. You heal, this is good. But once coalescence is over, and once like you have a lot of HP, you dodge the spear, you can be a little bit more aggressive. You shift here, you heal, you should just swap to damage boost. Maybe press tab and see who has, who is really close to their ultimate and try to pocket that target. So like in, the, in this case, although you're chain healing and stuff, what I'm trying to say is it would have probably been better to damage boost the Zarya than let the Genji, uh, than make sure that the Genji is alive. You heal, he's full HP. Now imagine if Zarya would have been damage boosted from the beginning. You could have gotten a kill. Shadag, uh, play one or two without me, bro. We'll play after. Look at this. Imagine if she had damage boost at the beginning. Mercy would have died. Who was going to be alive? Moira, Reinhardt, Orisa, and Janka were just coming back. See the small subtlety that I'm, I'm saying here? Even if your Genji died here, you would have won the fight. Why? Because Mercy dies, you're going to be in a fog. Uh, in a what? In a fog for you versus three. And your Zarya will have Graviton. Look at this. She would have died before Moira would have received the heal with how much beam charge Zarya had. And because of this, like you're hesitating, you don't know what to do here, you prioritize Genji's life, you think about healing rather than supporting. Does this make sense? You're healing rather than supporting. Your movement is good. One more thing though, like when you're jumping like this, is look down, okay? You're not looking down like this. You're, you can see some of your HP bars, some of your allies' HP bars, but you're not looking at everybody. So your movement is really good, but when you do this, when you jump and you're stuck in the motion, maybe just take your mouse and see who's low and plan your next escape instead of like just wiggling around in the air. Because right now you don't know if Hanzo, if the one behind you, if Torbjorn is low or not. You only see the Genji. You heal the Genji, and when you heal the Genji, you can also like maybe turn around. This is amazing. Now you have Eyes of the Battlefield. This is really good. Now you see everybody. 
Now you jump again. Now you gotta think, you heal or you damage. So, let's talk about supporting for one second over here, what I mean with this. This is the trap of playing support and why a lot of players think that support is only, is known as the healer role instead of the supporting role. You did here what almost every DPS and every tank expects supports to do. You didn't do anything wrong, <laughs> okay? You didn't do anything wrong from their point of view. You healed and you didn't die. In your mind, in your teammate's mind, is, is the following thing. They have to make a play. And yes, they have to make a play. After Coalescence is over because they're scared of Coalescence and you're healing them through Coalescence, which is really good. Amazing decision making here. After this is over and they're full HP, they have to go in. So this is over, Morgaz is fade. They have to go in. Hanzo needs to go on to the side. Zara needs to walk past the tanks or in the tanks. Genji needs to dash in. Torbjorn needs to stop being AFK in the back. Like, things need to happen. And if you see that your teammates don't do this, then you have to go aggressive. First things first, everybody's full HP. Start with damage boosting. Think on who can follow the kills or not. In this case... As a pro tip, a full charge Zarya is free elo. Literally, you will win so many games if you damage boost the Zarya. As a fun fact, I am recommending, I am recommending, I recommend it on TikTok and on Instagram and on ML7 plays as well. The best duo for a Mercy is Zarya if you're playing tank. And Mercy, that is. Why? Because she can bubble your guesses, you can, it's easy for you to stay close to her, and you can damage boost her, and she will just melt. So in this case, I would have given Genji's life away, and have damage boosted the carry. Detect who the carry is. Do you trust your Torbjorn? Oh, hell no. I see that you're ignoring him completely, which is good. You trust your Hanzo? Oh, hell no. You trust your Genji? Kind of. But sometimes it's okay to let your allies die, if you will win the fight. Realize that you have to do sacrifices. If you would have damage boosted the Zarya, you'd have killed uh, the Mercy. And then maybe the Graviton would have landed on Moega or on somebody else. You could have turned around to heal and that's it. Of course, some small... And like I see, like over here, you realize that you should damage boost a little bit too late. And you're already giving up their lives and stuff. And now it's a little bit too late. You can't do anything. So support your teammates by helping them... With Mercy in this case, doing damage boost, right? Damage boosting the carry so that they can get the kills. Leave some people behind. If they die, they die. Unlucky. It's not your fault. It's not your attempt. It's not your job to keep everybody alive. It's your job to do enough supporting to win the team fight rather than heal botting, okay? This is why I feel like a lot of Mercy players are saying that they're stuck and they depend a lot on their team. Yes, you depend a lot on your teammates with Mercy, but you can incentivize your team and encourage them to be more aggressive and get more picks if you damage boost them. If this doesn't happen, you can just be like, you know what? My team is bad. Hello. My team is so bad and I'm so good, and here's what I'm gonna do. When we regroup, I pop the Valkyrie, I heal as much as I can, I get close to the enemies, I pull the pistol. So right now, okay, fine. Imagine being with Valkyrie here, pulling the pistol and getting the kill onto the Moira and Glock them. Even if it's for two or three bullets, as long as your teammates will not die while you're doing so, or if they die, you'll get a kill, you should be fine. So deal the egg of this specific team fight. Do not heal non-stop. Realize that it's okay to let some of your teammates die if you're gonna win the fight. Prioritize the highest carry in your team with damage boost, either Genji here or Zarya. And sometimes we power the Glock. Yeah, she would have died. 100% should have died with damage boost tag. 100%. This was the key moment that you wanted me to see. Ready for battle. We still have some time. Let's watch from the beginning because we might see the same patterns again. Always have a damage boost target at the beginning. Uh, you're solo supporting. I understand you're playing from here. It's okay. You know what's the thing with... Uh, you go for the rest, what I want to see. Yes, you're going for the rest. <laughs> Your decision-making on Muggsy is not the issue, I would say. 
with the races and stuff. You're very decisive. This is very good. Obviously, chat. This is this is a bronze lobby. Instead of going, instead of uh, going like, why are you playing from there and stuff? Shotgun Kitty here is solo supporting in a bronze lobby, and everybody's just around all the place. So the decision making is good. Your movement is good. What you have to do though is realize who has kill potential, and don't focus that much on keeping team alive. Right here, this is good. Healing the Genji, damage boosting him. You see the Hog? Amazing! This is what I'm talking about. Instead of going with Hog, or instead of like going in the back and waiting for a regroup, you damage boosting the Genji here. Mwah! Shift's kiss. Amazing. You still heal. Realize that you leave the Hog behind. You don't care about him. Damage boost the Genji. Don't be afraid. Pull out the Glock. Nice. Exactly. You're not going to get punished. Really good. Hog gets out. What happens? You heal a little bit. You fly, he's slow, you go around and heal, you avoid that, he's on the ground, you try to heal, he can't do anything. Will you go for the guys? Yes, bad decision making. I'm not judging these races. If they work, they work. Movement is good. Good damage boosting, probably gonna go there and heal. You're trying, you heal. Four versus four. You have your ultimate, you pop the Valkyrie because you feel that you're low HP. You think about damaging the Junkrat, zone out a little bit, then you see the Genji. This is good. Of course, you can throw in like a little bit more damage boost here and there, but overall, considering the circumstances, there's not that much that I can tell you here, other than your Genji's full HP, start damage boosting. Don't be afraid to damage boost, see? Like, your teammates do not need full HP to get kills. Your teammates need sufficient amount of HP to get kills. If the enemies, if your teammate is 180 HP, do not feel obligated to make them full HP and then damage boost. You can just damage boost and start healing afterwards. It's one of the traps in which support players walk into because they heal too much. It's what everybody is telling them. Heal, 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 heal. For example, over here. Where is it? You're here to support, not here to heal. Look, over here. Genji's full HP. Why heal? Full HP. Full HP. Full HP. Taking some damage. Heal a bit. That's it. Turn around. I could use some assistance. Heal a little bit. Turn around to the Genji probably to heal. This is good. This is good. Nice. Nice. And now he's not getting focused. Maybe... You can damage boost a bit. He dies from Junkrat. That's unlucky. He gets spammed in Junkrat. You back out. Nice to engage. Your movement and your decision making is good. Very hard for them to catch you. Here's what you can do, for example. This is downtime. When when this happens, this thing specifically, considering how good you are mechanically with the hero, you can whip out the clock, pull the pistol, and shoot. Hook doesn't need healing. You're down one. You probably wait for a regroup. Instead of Going to hog, pull. you can do that with the pistol as well. Pull out the clock. Or damage boost the, the hog. See? He gets a hook. Maybe he would have not gotten, gotten a kill. They go for you. Nice dodges, nice dodges. You survive. Nice movement. You get a cover when you're low. You heal a little bit. Look, uh, another example. Here. Who's shooting the hog? Nobody. Muega and Mercy are two heroes that. Min that with with which if you minimize your resource management, you will be getting way more value. It's not as visual as it is with an Ana that lands a big anti nade onto the enemies or a big sleep dart. But over here, for example, guess the kill on the mercy. You heal. Who's next to Hog? Nobody. But he's booping Ana away. Can Reinhardt do damage to him? No. Damage boost. Just damage boost this. Kill them before they regroup. No need. You can heal the hog once he's done. You can heal the hog not even now. You can damage boost. You know what I mean? Kill the Genji. Fight is over. The full HP. Damage boost. You can heal after the fight is over. And here's another tip. Before you go like, but I'm afraid that my team will take a lot of damage. I told you something called sufficient healing. Hear me out. If... You do not heal them 
sufficiently. Wait, I, I'm trying to think how to explain this. Hmm. Hmm, how can I say? Maybe I can see another example in the future. A lot, of, a lot of healing. Yeah, I'm getting distracted by a lot of healing. I, I don't know how to say this, but... Your teammates being full HP lends, gets them into a false sense of security. If they're in a false sense of security and they die because they play too aggressive, then it's your fault. If you make them three quarters of HP or half HP, I guess, and damage boost them, then they will play smarter. Does that make sense? So when your hog is, he sees red on the screen and pushing a Reinhardt away, he's not going to push into five enemies afterwards. He's going to wait a bit. It's manipulative, but it's what it is. It is what it is. You're forcing them to be stressed, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't let them die. You, you should let them die, I mean. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't do that. But for example here, I'm just full HP. Damage boost, no heal. You can damage boost this. Turn around, he's low. You, you can't quite see the angle. Maybe pop the Valkyrie to get to him. You believe you can see the angle. Heal. He's using Deflect. You heal when he's using Deflect. Deflect is over. You can damage boost now. No need for him to be like completely full HP. Damage boost, damage boost. You dodge that. You get shattered. You realize you're aggressive. Good decision making. But look, for example, now. Don't care about the Toy Bjorn. What are you going to do now? I'm curious about this fight. He's full HP, trying to go for the guys. You heal right before you go for the guys. You go for the guys. I like this. A pick happens. You take the attention. Your decision making is super good. Your movement is super good. I can't, can't stop stressing this out. But now, Hulk full HP using vape, especially when Hulk uses his healing mechanism. Damage boost. Or do something else. Or pull the pistol. Or move somewhere else. He dies. No reason to heal. Damage boost. Damage boost. Damage boost. Damage boost. Planner escape. Damage boost. Damage boost. Damage boost. Damage boost, damage boost, damage boost, damage boost. Heal a little bit because you're scared. Damage boost, damage boost. Go to the Genji and damage boost. Damage boost forks, then heal. I like this. Here's one trick that you can do. That can, you can start damage boosting a little bit more. You know how whenever you group up to your team or you fly to somebody, you start with healing and then damage boosting if you feel like it? Well, do it the other way around in the beginning. Fly to your teammate that's full HP and start with damage boost. And then swap to healing. Same thing that you did here with Genji. Ideally, this is how micro mercy gameplay would look like. Like the most finesse one. Genji does this. Throw shurikens. You damage boost a millisecond before he throws it. Shurikens are, are out. You heal. Then you damage boost. Then you heal. Damage boost, heal, damage boost, heal. Genji gets his blade out, you heal because he doesn't do damage. He does the slash, damage boost. There's a small cooldown, you heal. Uh, then he slashes again, damage boost. Uh, 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 another example, playing with a soldier, he shoots when you damage boost. When he reloads, you heal or you do something else because there's no reason to damage boost then. Look, the damage boost here would have probably killed Mercy. Guessing. Would have probably killed Mercy guessing. I don't know if you lose this fight or not. Turn around. Genji's an aggressive. No reason to heal this. Just damage boost. He shot one bullet. Boom. Imagine the damage boosted bullet from Hogan to the Mercy. Imagine the damage boosted blade onto the Genji. You damage boost, I think, one slash though. Then you turn to healing. Does he finish the kill? You still heal him. He finishes the kill. Look. If you watch Mercy players playing Tough I Found It, you will see that in this particular scenario, they will heal a little bit, and then when they get to the Mercy, that's when they damage boost. For example, here, this is good healing. Guy, when you feel he's gonna go for the kill, you damage boost. He slashes a little bit too late. Now you heal, because there's downtime. Then he's dead. Good decision. Hog here. Nice, he's gonna die. I like the healing, but... He uses vape. If he's not getting focused, you can just damage boost again. And before people are gonna go like, yeah, but you're the solo support in this, so it's it's hard to damage boost ML7. That doesn't mean that you should only heal if you're solo support. Have you watched this video in which I win four versus five in bronze as solo support? Oh. Have you watched this video in which I win four versus five in bronze as solo support? 
There, I had to plug the main channel as well. I'm sorry. Okay, I guess we're done with the with the review most of it. So, let's go into Olaf review. Let's talk about the following. Aim. I'm gonna be honest with you. Aim. I have no idea. It's 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 not that important with Mercy. I'd I'd keep it at five. Positioning. Your positioning is good. You don't need to work on your positioning that much. I mean, you can be a little bit more aggressive. I would say. Let's put it at twenty. Decision making is good. I like that you're making the decisions, and I feel like, um, I'll, I'm gonna put like the cooldown section. The cooldown section. I'm gonna talk about uh, abilities because it's cooldowns and abilities. I would say. Hmm. So decision making is good overall. Like what you decide to do with your abilities is good, but about ability management, ability management and cooldowns. This is what you have to work on on your cooldowns with Mercy. I consider like the damage boost thing as. Um, Damage boost and healing weave as cooldowns in this scenario. So, your aim, you don't need to work on your aim. You don't have to do aim trainers. You don't have to work on your positioning that much in bronze. You see, it seems that you know the limits and you're playing pretty well, honestly. I could see you in gold, definitely. About your decision making, some risky maneuvers, I like that you're making them. But as we've seen in the last team fight, maybe starting with Valkyrie as an engaged tool rather than as a reactive tool might lead you to win in more games. But let's talk about cooldowns. And over here in the cooldown section for Mercy specifically, we're going to talk about damage boosting. Olaf recommends you damage boost more. You think who the carry is and damage boost the carry. Okay, as we've seen with Zarya. In that case, full charge Zarya would have just trolled them. Mercy plus Zarya, very strong. Okay. Um. Hmm, what else was there? Literally, you have to damage boost more. You think who the carry is and damage boost. Use Valkyrie as an engage tool sometimes. And do not try to make your teammates full HP in the fights. Do not try to make your teammates full HP. There you go. Boom. We're gonna. So all, this is what Olaf recommends. You damage boost Morg. You think who the carry is and damage boost the carry. Use Valkyrie as an engage tool sometimes, and do not try to make your teammates full HP. Do not. Do not play healer. Play support. Do not play healer. Play support. Sometimes it's okay to let your teammates die if you're gonna win the fight. Now, Olaf recommends you do the following to win fast. Next game, think, pick, pick and think. Next games, pick who carries the hardest and prioritize damage boosting them in fights. Try to relax in fights when people are not full HP and damage boost more. And three, use Valkyrie as an engage tool when when the fight is about to begin. Uh, the fights begin when every one is there. That's not how you write everyone. When enemies and allies shoot at each other. Right before when they start shooting at each other, I would say. That's what you gotta do, and you're gonna climb a lot more. Mercy has a little bit of a limited uh, carry potential because it's hard for her to get kills. 
And maybe this means that you should use your pistol more. Don't be afraid to pull out your pistol and do some shots to go for a kill if your teammates are going to die. Because if they die, you can go back and go for a rest. I would recommend... Seriously now, I would recommend that number one and number two, you do them fast and they're going to get you a lot of wins. Recognize who the carry is and invest more resources into them, even if your other allies are going to die. Imagine dueling in quick play with a top 500 player and you're playing Muggsy. Who are you going to damage boost in that case? Azaria or the soldier that you're playing with, for example? Same principle. And try to relax in fights when people are not full HP, because when they're full HP, they can go for kind of pepega plays, and you're there to clean up after them. You just need to heal them sufficiently so they don't die in the fight, and they get value. <laughs> Thank you for the vote. Time's up. Hey, I'm Olaf. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to subscribe. Meow.